so the stainless steel cover here I believe this is 304 stainless uh, quarter inch thick uh, floor plate tread plate diamond plate whatever you want to call it and um, here in the front you see there's a little strip there inch and a quarter wide by eight that uh, needs to be spaced eighth inch off the ground so I put an eighth inch spacer shim there and I'm using silicon bronze to brace this in there since I don't have the right gas for the stainless wire and I wasn't gonna go get a new tank of gas I need to install three stainless steel hinges and the stainless steel plate and MIG brazing works pretty well on stainless um, it's lacking a tiny bit tensile strength but all overall it's working just fine especially for what it is So here I'm removing my 8th inch spacer and now um, we're going on to those hinges. Essentially this is like some sort of stainless steel that's called a dust cover. It just covers a section of U-channel up and some product is moved underneath with an auger that keeps the, the dust out, the product in. There's no load, there's really no stress. So here I'm using a soapstone to shim the hinge a certain way so that I can weld it in a certain position where the hinge will later on be welded to a piece of C-channel and so that the height matches. I took notes and measurements before and I figured out how the hinge needs to be spaced and how it needs to sit in order to work the right way. So to minimize distortion and pull, I'm welding the left side and then the right side. And then once those are in, or actually I'm make brazing those, pulse make brazing. And then I'm doing the long run on the back side to minimize the heat input and warpage and distortion, the hinge not coming up unevenly. So now here I flip it over and I'm inspecting any bigger gaps or anything around the hinges making sure that the MIG brace really filled all the voids and attached everywhere. So I'm filling a couple little gaps there, just a few spot welds 
and I'm gonna show you a picture how it looks like after it's all ground off so it doesn't interfere with the clearance of the hinge. So here I'm not really worried about this big gap here that's on the long run, but these short pieces right here, those are the more likely parts where if there was a failure and the hinge would break out, it breaks out on the short pieces first, not on the long piece. So I filled those in, then I ground them off just to assure that they will hold. And in case you ever wondered where the pictures come from, that's where they come from. Thanks for watching and see you next time.